Today we'll be leaving Cienfuegos and traveling to Playa Giron, the Bay of Pigs. The Bay of Pigs is the site of the failed attempt by Cuban exiles, half-heartedly funded by my country, the United States of America, to overthrow in 1961 the new socialist regime headed by Fidel Castro. Within a year of the defeat of the ragtag group of hastily assembled Cuban exiles, the consequences of our folly had become all too clear. Fidel Castro, for the first time, declared himself as a communist with a capital C, looking for protection against the American threat. He asked for and got the support of the Soviet Union. The Soviets wasted no time in placing missile batteries in Cuba. This in turn produced the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962, which took us and the Soviet Union and the world to the brink of a nuclear war. The United States has ever since followed a policy of boycott and embargo and opposed the Cuban government in every way that it could, short of war. Today, 53 years later, it seems clear that this policy has done little, if anything, other than make conditions much more difficult economically for the Cuban people. However, there are finally signs that change is on the horizon, and we certainly hope that that is true. So, somewhat ironically, after another great breakfast, we've been taken to a government rations store for a look around. There are many stores like this one all over the island. Stores primarily carry food staples such as bread, rice, and beans. Also basics such as cooking fuels, matches, and light bulbs. These stores were established in the early days of the Castro regime in order to ration resources and make sure that no Cuban would starve after the United States policy of boycott and embargo had been implemented. We've heard that the government would like to do away with these stores, but can't because many Cubans still rely on them. The voice you hear explaining operations is that of our Cuban guide, Andy. Very, very important. And the one is five cans, and it's one bread per person. Now as we leave Cienfuegos, the final stop before the Bay of Pigs at the Benny More Provincial School of Art. Each province has such a school. Graduates perform around the island and at venues throughout the world, including increasingly in the United States. And now we're off. The Bay of Pigs has gone from a backwater fishing village to an area where tourists and foreign nationals often rent what are commonly called petrocasas because of the large number the Venezuelan petrochemical workers staying here. So we've arrived at the Bay of Pigs Museum. by a hard-looking woman in a military uniform carrying a rifle, we sit and watch a propaganda video of this debacle unfolding. The facts were undeniable, but the heavy-handed presentation and the atmosphere in the museum made us feel as though we were still enemies. This was to be the only time that we felt that way on the entire trip. As soon as the film was over, we decided to leave the museum and walk over to the nearby luxury resort that we saw on the way in. In the background, you can see a defensive barrier that was constructed after the Bay of Pigs in order to deter any future landing. Fortunately for everyone concerned, it has not been needed except perhaps as a breakwater, creating a large wave-free swimming area for guests of this resort. We've left Playa 
Lion Giron, the Bay of Pigs as it's called in English, and are heading over to the Hotel Enrique for lunch at their locally well-regarded Palador, meaning privately owned, government approved restaurant. After a wonderful lunch that included soup, appetizers, lobster, octopus, alcoholic beverages of our choice, and coffee and dessert, we headed upstairs to digest everything as we listened to a wonderful lecture by Frank, a conservationist at the nearby Large Zapata National Park. He spoke about efforts to protect and preserve Cuban crocodiles and other endangered species. Unfortunately, there would be no time to visit the park because we still had ahead of us a five and a half hour trip to Havana, our final destination today, and where we will be based the rest of our time in Cuba.